River Street South. Oh, the water side of town. Miles out of me way. I may find something yet. Yes. Yes. A child. A girl. Sitting there. On the tavern steps. In the shadows there. Alone. Perhaps she looks in the night. Now, go over. Get to her. Now, take it slowly now. It isn't. It isn't. Oh, God. Funny? Aye. I can see you through me glass. And you look funny. You're all twisted up. Twisted? All twisted up. You are. No. No, it, it's only the glasses it makes me look like that. Only the glass. You're all twisted up. I'm not. And out of shape. Like in the mirrors at the fair. No. I can see you and you are. It's true. Cross me heart. It's your glasses doing it. I tell you, I'm as... Straight as the rest, and the best of them. She's a pretty bairn. What are you drinking there? Fizzy lemonade. Is it nice? Smashing. Who, uh, who bought it for you? Your dad? Ma'am. Oh, good old ma'am, eh? With me dad's money. Oh. Me dad works on the buses. He's a driver. I, uh, I suppose he's in the, in the pub like now with, uh, with your ma'am. Oh, they'll be out soon. They're in the pub shopping beer. Oh. You sup beer? Oh, sometimes. You gonna sup some now? No, not now. I've other things to do. Mum's in the pub with me, Dad. Ah, so you said. They'll be out soon to take us home with them. Home? To our house. Ah. Oh. Whereabouts round here do you live, then? Blakey Street. Oh, Blakey Street, eh? Number six, Blakey Street, Newcastle on Tyne. Next door, the fish and chip shop. Yeah, I think I know it. I couldn't go in with them because I'm not grown up yet, you see. Hey, when, uh, when will you be grown up then? Oh, not yet, I won't. Why, uh, how old are you? You're five? You're, you're six? Uh, six and a half. <gasps> What's up? You touched my hand. No. You did, I felt. I, I didn't really. I, I, I brushed up against it like that. That's all, you see. Like this, you see. I, I, I was trying to balance myself, you know. Stop myself falling. It's, it's difficult to balance when you're all crouched up like this. Besides, why should I touch your hand? Why should I? I'm not going to tell you my name. Why not? I don't want to. Aren't I your friend? Susan Smith's me friend. I sit next to her at school. I copy her spelling. You can have two friends. Can I? You can have as many as you like. Two hundred if you like. I'll, I'll be one of them, shall I? If you like. Ah, and because I'm one of them, you can you can tell me your name, can't you? I mean, I, mean, mm. I won't tell anybody else, like. It'll be a, a little mm. secret just between the both of us. Oh, come on now, pet. Yeah, lean over and whisper it in me ear. Right, that's, that's, a, that's a lovely name, you know, isn't it? You, you, you won't believe this, you know, but uh, I've always uh, wanted to meet a girl called Lena. Especially one who likes fizzy lemonade as much as you do. Oh, well, uh, I'll be away then. Where are you going? For a drink. From the pub? No. Can I come? Do you think you'd better... I mean, we, we don't want to worry your mum and dad, do we? I mean, I mean, if they came out and found your oh, dog... They, they won't be out yet. They won't. They haven't been in there long. Haven't they? They haven't. No, I, I don't think it's much of an idea, really. I, I better go by myself. I'm coming with you. I no, am. No, 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 Lenny, I mustn't do that. I'm coming, I'm coming. No, now stay there. I, I don't want you to come with me. You wait there for your mum and dad. I don't want to wait. I want to come with you. No. 
Go away. You mustn't follow me. I'm going to follow you. Anyway, you'll, you'll get me into trouble. I'm coming, Go back. I'm coming, I'm coming. Please. Don't. 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 Mr. Lawson. Aye. I should say so. You have no idea how much Blakey Street's changed over the last two years. <laughs> I can imagine. You wouldn't know it now, would you, then? Different class of people altogether. Oh, it's a weird goers, I suppose. Aye. Once upon a time, you could call your neighbours friends, but now... <laughs> don't tell me. I can guess. Aye, you don't know the half of it, does he, Len? Brother, no, uh, things have got so bad of late that given half a chance we'd clear out of Blakey Street altogether. Get right away. You know, like to the suburbs or something. Why, there's some lovely flats going up there, you know. It all costs money, though, doesn't it? <laughs> a bomb, Mrs. Uh, Wheelie, a bomb. I mean, it's hard enough making ends meet as it is <laughs> without investing in property. <laughs> You're taking the very words out of my mood. And what with our Lena nicely settled in at school and everything, and <laughs> us just haven't had our living room he decorated, well, it'd be a bit of an upheaval now, wouldn't it? It would, it would. So what can we do? Well... Just sit tight until something turns up. Oh, what more can a person do? Oh, well, you never know. Lady Luck might come down our way, won't you? I'm sure she will, <laughs> Mrs. Wheelie. I'm sure she will. <laughs> now then, what are you drinking? Oh, how nice. Len? Len, Mr. Lawson's talking to you. What? Oh, not for me, thank you. Oh, finished already. Well, if you don't mind, Mr. Lawson... I reckon I'm in no mood for supping beer oh, tonight. Well, how about you, love? Oh. You'll take a little something, won't you? Well, well, I'm a gin and tonic. Of course, of You always were the one for a bit of the old mother's ruin, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> What's eating you, then? Nothing. Why? Gone a bit quiet, haven't you? Have I? What's wrong? The boil playing you up again. My boil's all right. Then why the face? Oh. Well, here's Mr. Lawson. Ungin and tonic for you, Mrs. Wheelie. Ta? And a bit of for yours truly. You sure you won't imbibe, Len? Uh, well, of course I... he will. It's just that his boil's playing him up a bit tonight oh. and he has trouble swallowing. But if this is something of an occasion, he's willing to suffer. Oh, no, that's what I call <laughs> friendly. Well. What you have, son? Uh, pale ale. Please. Please. I feel ill it is. Why don't you mind your own business? You are my business. The trouble with it is you can't resist poking your nose into other people's affairs. Oh, look who's talking. Uh, wait till I get you home, my girl. Oh, don't worry, Hercules. I'll be ready for you. Here we are, Len. Oh, uh, 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 thanks. A toast to the good old days. Uh, long may we remember them. <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Listen, what the plane? <laughs> 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 hey, that's a fine lass you've got there, son. No, uh, they don't come like that these days. I don't suppose they do. How's the boil now? Oh, not so bad, thank you. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's no trouble at all. But what I mean is that was why you went quiet, wasn't it? Not There's at nothing all. else, was no, it? No, not at all. Oh. I thought you mentioned the boil as an excuse, you know. Uh, no, no, no. It was nothing like that. I I, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> don't you? Oh, come on, then. You talk to me. Uh, you know that. Oh. Well? The tonight papers. What about them? Well, haven't you read? <laughs> don't tell me war's been declared. The Duffy girl. Duffy girl? You know. The one that's missing. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, what about her? Well, they still can't find her. Oh, not her in the ocean, I hope. No, thank God. Well, then why so worried? Oh, we, we should never have started this. Now, nah, tell me, why so worried? It's happened so much lately, kids disappearing and that. But and, uh, she's the second kid this month. And the first was a girl. She was. Well, surely they've got something to go on. Only that they think it's some man out Wixford Way has something to do with it. Wixford Way? Where my sister Doris lives. Oh, I've heard you talk of her. Keeping well, is she? Uh, she's all right. Mm. Of course, the papers don't help much, do they? That's true. It all looks so cool, blooded in print. 
You can almost smell the grass as the cops clawed through it. And the surface of the rivers breaking as the nets flew it down. Now, now, let our son, no need to get morbid about it. Uh, but we thank our lucky stars no one personal is involved in uh, talking about bright, happy, cheerful things. Hmm? Well, you and Lena, for instance. How's she getting on these years? <laughs> My, when, when I wave goodbye to Blakey Street, you would not put a wee bit beard in dark brown bloomers. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she's a smasher now, eh? Uh, yeah, yeah, she is that. Oh, yeah. here comes Nora. <laughs> Why mm. not? I did enjoy that. <laughs> 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 oh, we was just discussing Lena. Oh, I forgot all about her. Well, she probably wants another drink. I'll get her one. No, 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 let me. You? Please, I'd love to. Just to see if she remembers me. Mia? All right, if you want to. Champion. <laughs> I'll take her out a glass or something. <laughs> uh, what does she like? Lemonade. Any particular sort? Well, it doesn't matter so long as it's fizzy. Right. Uh, I'll just go and get one over here. Violin, I love that. Mm. <laughs> now, I don't think <laughs> Oh, well, here we go, then. You'll find her outside on the steps. And mind you don't trip over her. Oh, don't worry. I'll be careful. <laughs> Ah, uh, what a gentleman. <laughs> nice meeting up with him again. Well, he hasn't changed a bit. Mm. Still wearing the same blue tie. That's not what I meant. You know it isn't. I meant his manner was still the same. Oh, his manner. I could teach you a thing or two, my lad. Like what? Well, like how to behave yourself in public. Especially in the company of a lady. Sorry, I thought he was a man. I meant me, knucklehead. Oh, you. Hey, that was quick. What, what? Mr. Lawson. Well, he didn't have far to go. Len. Don't oh, stop pulling me, can't you? Len, something's happened. What, what are you talking about? Mr. Lawson. Well, what about him? He's still got that lemonade. Yes. What? Lena. Lena. Lena! Lena. I'm sitting on the grass. Oh, uh, 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 I, I thought you'd gone. Here. Oh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> it's fizzy. Is it all right? I'm smashing. Uh, is your tail all right? Oh, it's a, a bit on the strong side, you know, but uh, it'll do. Hmm. It's nice here, isn't it? Is your house near here? Uh, no. No, I'm, uh, I'm from out Wixford Way. Wixford Way? Yeah, it's a dump of a village about ten miles out, full of farmers and country bumpkins. Oh, I know Wixford. Oh, do you? I've an auntie lives there. Really? Mm, auntie Doris. Number 40 Craddock Close, Wixford. Do you know her? No, I, I can't say I do. Oh, look. An ant. A what? An ant. There. Where? Yeah. Crawling in your saucer. What so it is? Shall we see if we can get it out? Why, just so we're not too long, then. Look, here's some grass. What? A stalk for you and a stalk for me. Now, the first one that gets it out is the winner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, look, she's crawling into that little pool of tea. Oh, we must save her, mustn't we? Why, yeah. Uh, you stop her then. And I'll, I'll, I'll try to knock her to one side, look. Oh, she keeps running away. Well, try and trap her. Once, once you've trapped her, you know, the, the rest plain sailing. What's plain sailing? Why, well, you know, easy, you know. Oh, where's she gone to now? Well, I don't know. She must be here somewhere. Where she is. Where? I can see her. I can. Look, Lena, it's getting late. She's and... right in the middle of your saucer. We'll catch her this time, then. We mustn't hurt her, must we? Well, we try not to. She's running around in circles. Well, of course, she knows she's trapped. Is she trapped? What else? Oh, if I was trapped, I'd scream and shout and kick me legs. Have you finished your pop yet? Not yet. All right, hurry up and finish it, then. All right. Mm. What? There she is. We'll catch her this time. Well, we'll make this the last try then, shall we? If we don't catch her this last time, we'll give up, right? She's on the edge of the saucer. Right on the brink. I'm creeping up on her with my sword, aren't I? Aye, and I'm creeping up on her with mine. 
Yeah, I touched her with mine, didn't I? I, I touched her with mine, didn't I? Well, she's rolling over onto her side. Look at her little legs waving. <laughs> Funny, aren't they? What's she doing now, then? She's running down the side of the mountain. Oh, she's getting nearer the river. I've stopped her. Oh, I've, I've knocked her further down. And take her out of danger. And I'm trying to push her into the river. Oh, that's it. You try and push her into the uh, river. You know the tea. And I'll try and save uh, her. Uh, okay, then. But uh, get a move on Shh. her. I'm on your side, Mrs. Ant. I'm going to save you from that naughty dragon. Oh, no, you're not. I am. You're not. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, no, she's not, Mrs. Ant. Because I'm stronger than her both of you put together. Oh, no, you're not. Well, yes, I am. You're not, because I'm strongest. Because I'm going to push her back up the mountain. And I'm pushing her down again. And I'm pushing her up again. And I'm pushing her down again. And I'm pushing her up again. Down again. Up again. Down again. Up again. And down again. Down again. Up again. Down you go. No. I'm stronger than you. You're not. I am. You're not. Down. No. Down. No. The dragon's winning. He's not. He is. He's not. He is. He's not. He is. He's not. Did you leave your daughter, Mrs. Wheelie? Outside a pub. Outside a pub. Did right. the pull over near, Mrs. Wheelie? Oh. oh. The blue parrot, Sergeant, down by the docks. The blue parrot, River Street, so. That's the one. Uh huh. And whereabouts outside did you leave her? The pavement? The gutter? On the steps, Sergeant. Oh, it's all right, Nora. Hinny, there, there. Everything's under control, isn't it, Sergeant? There, there, pet. You see, it's like this, Sergeant. You cannot take kids into pubs. And we always leave Lena there, you know, on the steps with a glass or something while we pop in for one or two. Oh, three or four or five, I know. I've heard it all before. Oh, we should have known better, of course, but... To this duffy girl business and everything. Oh, Sergeant, oh. nothing's happened to her, has it? That's what we have to ascertain, isn't it? Uh, well, as you no know, doubt know, these things may take a little time. But she's got school tomorrow. Oh, there's no need to get all worked up, Nora. How can you say that? Well... She's our daughter, our little Lena, our baby. Well, perhaps now you'd be so kind as to give me a description of your daughter. You know, what she looks like, what she was wearing. She was a... Pretty little girl with black curly hair. Black curly hair. Was wearing a blue frock. Blue frock. A woolly jumper. Woolly jumper. Brown sandals. Brown sandals. I didn't mean to do it, Lena. It was an accident. You drowned in her. It was an accident, pet. My hand slipped. She got caught up in the grass and fell in the tea before I could stop her. You drowned it, Mrs. Hunt. You, you drowned in oh, her. Pull yourself together, pet. You know it wasn't my fault. Besides, it was only an ant. She was a lovely ant. Well, there are plenty more. I like that one. Oh, now, stop bubbling now. Come on, dry your eyes. Did you feel any pain, do you think? Oh, I doubt it. It was all over in a flash. It must be terrible, drowning like that. Uh, lots of people have. Can you swim? No. You sure you're all right, sitting up here on the parapet like, you know, it's a, it's quite a drop into the water? Oh, you won't push us in, will you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a, you're a funny bear, aren't you? Can I get down now? Oh, so, so you want me to get you down now, do you? <laughs> Will you lift us off? <laughs> I, I don't know, pet. One minute you're asking me to lift you up onto the parapet to look at the water. 
And the next minute you're asking to be lifted down. <laughs> you, you don't know what you want, do you? <laughs> No, I don't know. Don't do I? <laughs> it's, it's about time you you made up your mind what you want, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is, isn't it? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And even when you've made it up, there, there's no saying you'll, you'll get what you want, is there? <laughs> no, there isn't, is there? <laughs> <laughs> well, there isn't, you know. <laughs> so you can't swim, eh? No. Then I'd... Uh, I'd better hold you... Tight there, no? Yeah, I would don't want me ending up oh. like Mrs. I, do we? <laughs> no. I mean, that would be a shame, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would, wouldn't it? <laughs> Aye, it would. <laughs> wouldn't it? a bit, Mansford. You know what a man's now? Right, sir. Sorry, sir. You two are right in the back there? Then he can't be back. On the way? She's all right. Uh-huh. Keep on a call for the band, won't you? We don't want to miss her. Don't worry, sir. We've got our eyes skin. Uh-huh. Left here, Mansford. Left it is, sir. Where are we? Not far. Not far from where? From where we started. We seem to have been driving around in circles. <sighs> Lenny's Transport Cafe. Slow down, Mansford. We are pushing the bridge. Wait a bit. How's that over there? Where? They're on the bridge there by the parapet. I can't see anybody. There. A man and a girl. It's Lenny. Sergeant, that's her. You're sure? Of course I'm sure. I could okay, tell. Okay, Mansford. Oh, Pull up beside them. We'll take them together. Hurry. Hurry up. I keep pushing her in. Lena! Ah! Let go where you think you're at. Lena, my baby, what did you do to you then, Pet? Come here. Leave him alone. It's all right, Hinny. They're policemen. Tell him to stop it, Dad. I hurt him. Ah, the monster's uh, down. Come. Let him go, me. Well, I hurt him, Dad. I hurt him. Oh, quiet, oh. Pet. They know what they're doing. Eh, what a fine body you made. You realise that you're resisting arrest. So what, the... you've, you've got nothing on me. Ask the kid. Well, save that for the station. No, no, ask her now. There'll be no need to go to the station. All right. Oh, well. Mrs. Wheelie? Yes? Bring your daughter over here uh, a minute, will you? Uh, that's... That's right. She, she'll tell you. She'll tell you. You monster! You will save your breath, Nora. He's not worth I it. I could wring his neck, I could. All right, bring it up. I'll deal with this. Lena. You hurt him, didn't you? You twisted his arm. I saw you. Never mind that. Now, what did he do to you? Come on, you can tell us. We're your friends. You're not... Susan Smith's my friend, and he's my friend. That's why I'm stirring him up with the toes. Burn him. <laughs> Nora, please. Now, Lena, tell us everything from the beginning. Go on, Lena. Tell him, don't be shy. I, I don't want to. Lena, Mum and Dad left you outside the pub, didn't they? Did this man come up and ask you to go for a walk with Here, him? Here, cut that out. Quiet, you. <laughs> he, he's putting words into her mouth. Quiet. Something wrong, Monsford? Everything's in order, Sarge. No, it isn't. You'll never get the truth out of her by talking to her like that. You're forgetting she's only a bairn. Oh, come, let's run him. Wait. Well, seeing as how bairns seem to be your speciality, perhaps you'd like to question her. All right. But no funny business, mind. I've got nothing to hide. Lena. Is your arm all right now? Yeah, that, that didn't hurt me, Pet. Lena, these people think I, I try to take you away. Did I? I followed you, didn't I? Yeah, you did, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I did, didn't I? I? I didn't want you to come with me, did I? You didn't, did you? <laughs> I, I, I told you to wait on the steps for your mum and dad, but you, you followed me all, all the way down the road to the cafe. Liar. Mrs. Wheelie. I, I bought you some fizzy lemonade, didn't I? I was sat in the grass and we were playing a game. What kind of a game? With an ant. What? Oh, it was, it was daft, really. She, she found an ant and we... Well, we missed the boat with it for a bit. She got drowned in, didn't she? Ah, she... She fell into the tea and sunk, didn't she? I, I kept telling her it was time she went back to the pub and we, we were on the point of returning when she... when she heard the water. She she said she wanted to see it, like, so... I, I brought you over to the bridge, didn't I, Pet? Ah, you said it's right on the edge, didn't you? We just hung about there for a bit, looking at the water, you know, just looking at it. 
was just about to leave when you drove up. Uh-huh. It's a pack of lies. I know, I can tell. Why, well, just look at his face. You can tell he was up to no good. <laughs> no, Dad. Uh... This is Wayne I must ask you to control yourself. I don't blame you for carrying on like this. What mother in her right senses wouldn't? But I didn't do anything bad. I, I didn't intend to either. Your being followed me, that's all. It was silly of me to talk to her in the first place, but... Well, I was feeling pretty down in the dumps when I saw her. And in any case, I, I took her for someone else. You've got nothing on me. Okay, man, sir. Release him. Right, You're not letting him get away with it. You object? But he's committed a felony. Has he? I don't think so. You have just heard his story. Your daughter followed him, at all. He wasn't to blame for that, was he? You were to blame for that, weren't I you? Just a uh, she was feeling neglected. I wanted a bit company. Didn't get any. <laughs> Come on, Len. We're going. I've had enough of this. Uh, Lena, how do you do this? Well, I'd like to thank you, Sergeant. And you, Constable, for all that you've done. <laughs> I can assure you we won't be troubling you again. Oh, sincerely hope not, Mr. Willie. And you, Mr. Uh, well, I'd like to apologize on behalf of me and the wife. Uh, perhaps you'd be so kind as to let me pay for the fizzy lemonade you bought. No? Uh, well, maybe one night we'll have a drink together <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, good night and uh, thanks again. There goes a very lucky man, eh, Mansford? Uh, he doesn't know how lucky. I'm uh-huh. oh, sorry about the rough and tumble, sir. We was only doing our duty. That's all right. Can we drive you anywhere? Thanks, no. I'd, I'd rather walk. Uh, suit yourself. Oh, there was just one other thing, sir. You said you took that bayon for someone else. You were making that up, weren't you? No, I, I wasn't making it up. I really was looking for someone. May I ask who? My daughter. The toffee girls. I'm a father. In A Glass of Lemonade by Barry Bermange, the man was played by John Hollis, Lena by Isla Cameron, and Mr. and Mrs. Whaley by Philip Morant and Kathleen Helm. Other parts were played by Brian Cullis, Julian Summers, Hayden Jones, Donald McKillop, Hilda Kreisman, Sheila Grant and Derek Birch. How about another liqueur, Jim? No, thank you, Bob. Have a board meeting this afternoon. Oh, you have my sympathy. After a good lunch, I like to put my feet up for a couple of hours. <laughs> Waiter. Yes, sir? Uh, I'll take the bill, please. And would you make it out to Robert Craig, Frozen Foods Limited? Certainly, sir. I won't keep you a few moments. Off the expense account, eh? Oh, naturally. Could hardly afford to wine and dine you off my meager salary. Now, come on, Bob. You can plead poverty to the tax inspector, but not to me. I read your last annual report. Your company's doing very nicely. Can't complain. Almost double your turnover, haven't you? Well, uh... Not that it surprised me. You know, your lines have been some of my store's best sellers. They're attractively packed, fine quality, excellent value. <laughs> the purpose of this lunch was for me to sell you the goods. Well, there's no need. For rights, I should be paying the bill. I want your stuff. Now, you just repeat all previous orders for poultry, fruit and veg. That's very generous of you. Nonsense. Now, what's the position regarding delivery? We had one or two hold-ups last year. Mm. We're still a bit tight for space at the London factory, but things should improve any day. Now, I'm installing two new cold storage rooms. Ah, yeah? They must cost you a pretty penny. Mm. You can say that again. Still, it seems to be a constantly expanding market. That's why I've thrown everything I've got into the business. Uh, how's that pretty young wife of yours, by the way? Fine. Doesn't she get lonely whilst you're gadding about the country? I haven't heard her complain. I don't understand why you don't employ a traveller. Give you more time to yourself. There's no substitute for personal contact. I've spent years building this business. I've found if you want a job done properly, you've got to do it yourself. Who's in charge while you're away? Alan Scott. I think I introduced you when you were in London last year. Oh, yes. Nice-looking chap. Mm. Distant cousin of Lucy's. Not very imaginative. Frankly, I took him on to please her. Well, if I had a pretty young wife like Lucy, I wouldn't go off and leave her behind. No fear. 
Uh, your bill, sir. Uh, thank you. Oh, that's most kind of you, sir. Uh, I'll get your coats. Where are you up to now, Bob? Uh, to the garage to collect my car. Driving straight back to London? Yes, fortnight away. I mustn't be late. Promised Lucy I'd be back in town by 4.30. The sign. London 70. Yeah. Good, good luck. I should be back at the flat by four. Oh, the roads are empty. That's something. The old bus is running well. Five. Come on now. You can do better than that. That's better. Hey, you know what the... I can't hold her. God, there's something wrong with the steering. Have you found the trouble? Yes, sir. All right, simple enough. The nut on the track rod slackened off. You take a look. Hmm. How did that happen? Who can say? Depends. Might have been left that way after a service, so it's very unlikely. Then I suppose it might have come loose by itself. Vibration. Vibration? Mm. Unusual, but there's always a first time. You certainly were born lucky. If you'd met any oncoming traffic, I reckon you'd have had it. Is there a phone I could use? Uh, yeah, there's a public box round to the left. Lucy? Lucy? Anyone at home? Yeah. How's the time? Mm, almost 5.20. I'd better ring the factory before it closes. Hello? Miss Collins, when you answer the phone, would you kindly say Craig's Frozen Foods, not just hello? This isn't Miss Collins. She's out of the office. What? recognize my voice, darling. Lucy. Yes, Lucy. I'm certainly glad I don't work for you, Mr. Craig. <laughs> what are you doing at the factory? I waited at the flat until five. When you didn't show up, I thought you must have come straight here. But what happened to you? Why are you so late? Yeah, oh, I'll explain later. Well, I shan't be long, darling. I'll ring for a cab right away. Yeah, no, it's all right. I'll pick you up. Oh, don't bother to make a special journey. I'm not. I've got to come down there anyway. I should be with you in about uh, 20 minutes. Oh, Bob, you startled me. Don't you ever knock? Yes, but not on the door of my own office. <laughs> oh, darling, you look wonderful. <laughs> Here, on your feet. <laughs> mm. Bob, we're not at home now. Who cares? But Alan might walk in. He usually knocks. <laughs> mm. What are you staring at? You've been overdoing it again. You're looking tired. Am I? And pale. Well, I'm not surprised. I had a spot of bother on the way down. Oh? Uh, my steering went adrift outside Milton. I still can't believe I'm not swathed in bandages. Are you all right? I'm in one piece, if that's what you mean, but it shook me up, I can tell you. How did it happen? Oh, a nut came loose or something, I don't know. I tried to phone you from the garage, but the line was engaged. What time was that? Oh, about three. Three? Oh, yes, Alan rang to ask when I was expecting you. Mm -hmm. Where is he now? I don't know. Probably down in one of the new cold storage rooms. He's worked like a Trojan while you've been away. Well, that's what I pay him for, isn't it? He was determined those storage rooms would be finished by the time you got back. <laughs> I made it quite clear they had to be. If sales should drop off and you haven't got enough cold storage space, you're in dire trouble. Then make sure you have enough space. The cost, my love, the cost. Refrigerators are expensive. You're becoming very mercenary in your old age. Hmm? Think so? Well, you'll change your mind when you know where I'm planning to take you this evening. Where? The Lagonda. <gasps> Bob! That's outrageously expensive. <laughs> now, who's being mercenary? <laughs> but what's this suddenly in aid of? Well, must there be a reason? Hmm. Well, let's say... To celebrate the installation of the new cold storage rooms. Oh, how romantic. <laughs> Bob? Hmm? Why don't we ask Alan along? What? He's worked so hard. It would be a nice gesture. Well, I suppose it would. Uh, but it's my first night back, and I'd rather look forward to spending it alone with you. All right. I only thought that... Perhaps some other time. 
Now I must go and find her. Oh, come in. Oh, hello, Bob. I wondered whether you'd arrived. Yeah, I was just coming to look for you. Did you have a good trip? Well, we've increased orders from the multiples, though Stacy's were complaining about the quality of the fish fingers. Oh. And when I got to Farnworth's head office, they told me their weekly delivery of poultry hadn't arrived. Yes, I know. But there's no shortage. Why wasn't it delivered? Well, everything was set, but as the drivers were about to load, they found there was no dry ice. But we've half a ton permanently on order. I rang the ice company, but apparently something had gone wrong with their plant. Well, did you try anywhere else? No. Why not? But they said we'd get our supply the following day, and we did. And meanwhile, Farnworth had to go without their supply of poultry. Well, I didn't think a oh, day... Really? Bob, it's hardly fair to blame Alan. After Look, do I... you know how long it took me to break into the Farnworth chain? Two years. I had to compete with the local farmers and every frozen food business in the country. But, Bob, I... And now, because you didn't think, I'll be lucky if they ever give us another order. I think I'd better go. <sighs> what time can I expect you, Bob? I'll be back as soon as I can. I'm sorry about the Farnworth order, Bob. I, it, it's been such a hectic week, what with all the installation going on. I, I wanted to be sure that the storage rooms would be finished. And are they? Well, yes. The last engineer left at midday. They, they've done an excellent job. Why not take a look at them? I know you'll be pleased. All right. Lead the way. This is the door of number one room. Mm -hmm. Number two is further down the corridor. No handle. Oh, that's stated. These are automatic. You press this button on the right-hand wall. And hey, presto, it's open. The doorway is large enough for a mechanical truck to drive straight in and unload. Oh, good idea. But what about the temperature rise when the door's open? Well, they say it's negligible. The room's at minus 20, and if it should rise above zero, to save the food spoiling, the door closes automatically. Hmm. I'll just have a quick look inside. Ooh, should have brought my overcoat down with me. <laughs> certainly is nippy. Well, the, the temperature gauge is reading minus 19. Well, right, let's get out of here. Do you want to inspect the other room, Bob? No, I won't bother tonight. I'm taking Lucy out to dinner. I must get back and change. Darling, hmm? do you mind if we sit down? I've had enough. Hmm. Hurry, before the band starts up again. Right. Oh, my feet. Oh, hmm. that's better. Yeah. Oh, like a cigarette? Oh, yes. Try one of mine, darling. Mm -hmm. Then you. Oh, thanks. Here you are. Thanks. Uh, is that a theater program in your bag? Yes, it is. Hmm. May I have a look? If you want to. Hmm. Prelude to murder. Hmm. A thriller. <laughs> I suppose you'd call it that. Alan had a couple of tickets and asked me if I'd like to go along. I see. I didn't think you'd mind. Why should I? As a relative, I suppose he's entitled to take you to a theatre once in a while. <laughs> well, next time I hope he chooses something a little less morbid. It wasn't at all my cup of tea. Though I must say he adored it. Hmm. Yeah, go anywhere else while I was away? Oh, a concert or two. With Alan? Once. Uh, talking of Alan. Yes? He seemed to run things very well while you were up north. <laughs> the way I have the place organized, it runs itself. Aren't you pleased with him? No, not very. But six months ago, you were talking about making him a partner. Yes, well, since then, I've had time to think about it. I've changed my mind. But why? Well, to put it bluntly, he lacks imagination. There's little point in taking him into the firm if I can't trust him. What do you mean? Oh, look at the way he handled that Farnworth order. As I said, no imagination. It's never a good thing to have relatives working for you, however distant difficult to keep things on an impersonal level. What do you intend to do? Frankly, it would be easier for all of us if I gave him notice at the end of the month and had done with it. I think you're making a mistake, Bob. No? Wouldn't be my first. Now, let's drop the subject. I've had my fill of Ellen for one day. But, darling... Oh, come on. Let's dance. Look, the floor's less crowded.
You better hurry, Bob. You'll be late. Uh, I shan't be going to the factory for an hour or so. I have one or two things to clear up first. Um, will I be in your way here? No, I'll just get rid of the breakfast things. Uh -oh. Uh, no, Bob. Stay where you are. I'll answer it. Hello? Lucy, it's Alan. How did you get on last night? I can't talk to you now, Alan. Bob's decided to work at home. I'll try and drop by the factory later on. But, Lucy, I... Goodbye. Have you finished with your cup? Uh, yes, thanks. Who was that? Oh, no one, darling. Just a wrong number. We'll be all right in here, Lucy. Miss Collins has gone down to the bank. Well, did you talk to Bob? I tried, but I'm afraid I wasn't very successful. But didn't he say anything about the partnership? Yes. Well? That he'd thought about it, but decided against it. But he promised me. And that's not all. What do you mean? I don't think he's going to keep you on. What? I'm sorry, Alan. When I think of the way I worked this past six months, I could... Alan? What? Bob's car's down there in the yard. But I, I thought you said he was staying at home to work. He must have changed his mind. Oh, now, I, I don't want to bump into him if I can help it. I'll go down by the goods lift. All right. Now, Alan, promise me you won't do anything rash. Well, all right, but... You'd better go now. I can hear someone in the outer office. Oh, good morning, Bob. Oh, hello, Alan. The delivery of sweet corn arrived. I left a cob on your desk. I'd like you to take a look at it. Oh. Huh. This it? Hmm. It's a bit pale, isn't it? Uh, that's what I thought. It's nice and firm all the same. I think it'll process well. Has Lucy been in this morning? Lucy? N not as far as I know. Why? Uh, her gloves are on my desk. Must have left them here when she dropped by yesterday. Very likely. I'll be in the factory if you need me. Oh, there you are. Oh, hello, Bob. I thought everyone had left for the night. Oh, I shall be going in a few minutes. But how did the sweet corn turn out? Oh, not at all bad. If you'd like to come into the cold storage room, I'll show you a sample. Hmm. I'd have brought you a sample earlier, but uh, it didn't leave the processing plant until 5.30. No, after you, Bob. The sweet corns stored over the side. It isn't as cold today, or is it my imagination? Hmm. Seems much the same to me. Here we are. This is a, a 12-ounce pack. What do you think? Hmm. Looks a bit anemic to me. Sweet corn should be a nice, rich, goldy colour. Dry summer was probably to blame. Still, it'll do. Can go back on the shelf. Right. Oh, while I remember, there's a large order from Star Hotels for strawberries and also chicken pies. How much stock are we carrying? I'm not sure, old fan. If you'd like to check the fruit in here, I'll go next door and check the pies. OK. I shan't be long. Right, strawberries. Well, what have we got here? Raspberries. Uh, Loganberries. Ah, here they are, strawberries. There's a gross in a rack. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six gross of 12-ounce packs. Yes, that ought to cover the order. Bass! Light's gone out and the door's closed. Oh, I know what's happened. The temperature must have risen and the doors shut automatically. Ah, oh, these newfangled ideas. Oh, of course, there wouldn't be a handle on the inside. Blast. Alan! Alan! Oh, I expect he's still checking those pies. Anyway, I doubt if he'd hear me. The door must be at least six inches thick. <sighs> what do I do now? Just wait, I suppose. Oh, he's bound to be through in a minute. I wonder what the temperature is. There's some matches somewhere. Uh, oof. Only about four left, so that's better than nothing. Now, where's the temperature gauge? If I remember rightly, it was just to the left of the door. Ah, yes. Oh, just on 
zero. No wonder the door closed. Should be minus 20. And probably went up when they brought in the last batch from the factory. Oh, come on, Alan. I don't want to be here all night. Alan! Alan! Oh, what's keeping him? But if he found the door closed, he might have imagined I'd gone back up to my office. Of course. Oh, stop worrying. He knows you want those figures. He wouldn't just go off home. You can never tell with him. Oh, he's a dead loss. Alan! Open this door! Can you hear me? It's getting a bit chilly. Better try to keep warm. Swing your arms. It's the good old fashioned way. Can't keep that up for long. Out of condition. Don't fall off to sleep. That's what they say, isn't it? Perhaps a walk might help. The room's about 30, 40 feet long. I can walk up and down between the racks. Yes. Down this side will do. in the gangway blast them. And I'd better stay in one spot. It's safer. Right, now slowly back to the door. Yeah. What's that noise? Oh, of course, it's the compressor. It'll go on working until the temperature drops to minus 20. It's getting colder. Let's get out of here and quick. Alan! Alan! I'm locked in the cold storage room. Can you hear me? Alan! 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 It's no use. Now just relax for a moment. You mustn't panic. You may have gone off without realizing what's happened. And then when I don't arrive home, Lucy's bound to ring him. He'll come back to look for me. If only there was somewhere shutting that compressor off. At least it wouldn't get any colder. Now, what's the temperature now, I wonder? Oh, minus ten. I'd better get out of here. If only I had something to force open the door. The cold's becoming unbearable. You can see the headlines. Man freezes to death in cold store. Accidents will happen, I suppose. After all, I nearly had one yesterday with the car. See what I mean, Jim? This nuts work loose. Unusual, but it's always the first time. But if you'd have met any oncoming traffic, I reckon you'd have had it. Uh, must be accident prone. Now I come to think of it, there was that narrow escape last month with the goods lift. Uh, when I opened the gates and stepped into the opening and the lift wasn't there. <laughs> Luckily I was able to grab the wire mesh inside the shaft. And just luck that Fred heard me call. I'd have fallen five floors into the basement. Uh, there was that other close call when I went down to the goods yard to have a word with Alan. Mr. Craig, you okay, sir? Yeah, fine, but what happened? Oh, I don't rightly know, sir. A pile of crates suddenly tipped over. 
If I hadn't got out my truck just then, I'd never have seen her. Lucky he did. I must be accident prone. There's no other explanation. Unless... But, God, if there weren't accidents, then somebody tried to kill me. Uh, that door. I thought that door closed on its own, but someone could have pressed that button and trapped me deliberately. Of course, it was Alan. Alan. He could have meddled with my car before I left London, tampered with the lift, and levered over those crates, and now he's locked me in here to freeze. Why? He's not my heir or my partner. I intended to get rid of him. I told Lucy so. Could she have told him? When? Could she have been in my office this morning? I thought I smelled her perfume. They must have planned it together. Oh, very crafty. All he had to do was to press the button and go off home. And when I found it, it looked like an unfortunate accident. I must make an effort. I, I must stay awake. My only chance. Swing your arms. Swing them. I can't go on anymore. I'll never survive. Compressor stopped. Must be minus 20 then. Must make a last effort. Must. darling. Don't you recognize me? Uh, are you? Yes, darling. Where am I? In hospital. You're suffering from shock and frostbite, but you'll be all right. Where's Alan? Oh, no need to worry about Alan. He's in the next room. He's had a rough time, though not quite as bad as you. What? Oh, of course. How would you know? While you were locked in one room, he was locked in next door. Both doors closed within a few seconds of each other. We were both trapped? Yes. He saved your life. He remembered the watchman came on duty at eight, so he tipped over the storage racks one by one. <sighs> Fortunately, the watchman heard the noise. <laughs> oh, well, that's better. Oh, Lucy, will you forgive me? Forgive you? For what? Ah, oh, for lots of things. For being vain, self-centered, pig-headed. And... I don't know what you're talking about. But if you're in the mood for making amends, how about keeping Alan on? I'll do more than that. I'll give him that partnership. Oh, but I thought you said he hadn't enough imagination. Yeah. On reflection, I think perhaps it's possible to have too much. 
In Cold Storage by Philip Levine, Robert Craig was played by Nigel Graham, Lucy Craig by Bonnie Huron, and Alan Scott by John Forrest. Other parts were played by Brian Haynes and Vernon Joyner. Mysterious Circumstances Good night, Stacey. Good night, Sir George. Good night, Paul. Good night, sir. Uh, meet here again for your revenge next week, eh? Next Wednesday. By all means. Sure. Thank you, sir. I've enjoyed the evening immensely. Splendid. Uh, get in. Whiskey and soda. Oh, thanks. Uh, 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 Matthews, two whiskeys, please. Very good, Sir George. Yes, I must say I enjoy my Wednesday bridge. Hmm. Young Paul Fenton plays a good cerebral game, doesn't he? Fenton's a very cerebral young man altogether. Yes. That's why I employ him. What does he do for you exactly? The technical side came down with a magnificent degree. He always struck me as a little uh, smooth for one of your tough bridge-building types. We don't build bridges. Dams are our speciality. Ah, oh, yes, I see. And mm. even at this early stage, Fenton's the best explosive man we've ever had. Ah, thank you, Matthews. Uh, uh, say when, get in. When? Ah, just right, thanks. Well, your very good health. And yours? <sighs> Didn't Fenton marry Pardo's daughter? Yes, he did marry Pardo's daughter. And they separated after less than a year. Go on, next part of the question. Well, I'm not particularly interested. I merely asked because... You well, asked because there are a lot of damn malicious stories circulating about Fenton and my daughter, Christine. Now, look here, Sir George, I can assure and you I that can I can assure you that the stories were groundless. And if I ever find out the source of them, I'll, I'll make a long arm for my lawyer. Damn fast. Anyhow, Fenton and his wife are back together now, and they're... Generally trying to make a go of it. Given the chance, they will, too. Well, I'm glad of that. Yeah, he met the girl when he came down from Cambridge. Love at first sight. Stupid pair of young blighters got married before the boy had a chance to get established. Completely unsuited to each other. So it went on the rocks. Really? Yes, and they parted for about a year. She went back to her mother who lives in the Bahamas. My girl Christine tried to help, sort of thing she would do. Advice, a bit of sympathetic listening, you know what I mean? Yes, I do. Yeah, young Fenton used to come down for weekends at my behest. Next thing we know, people were starting putting two and two together and making a dozen out of it. Very unpleasant for all concerned. Very, and there was absolutely nothing in it. George Hartnell's residence. Now, this is Paul Fenton speaking. Could I speak to Miss Christine Hartnell, please? Just a moment, please. Uh, Mr. Fenton for you, Miss Christine. Paul, where are you speaking from? London. Anything wrong? Good heavens, though. I just wanted to hear your voice, that's all. Is this line safe? Mm, quite. It's Father's extension, and I've got the cutout switch on. Paul, there is something wrong, isn't there? You bet there is. I'm married to the wrong woman, that's all. Oh, it's no good, my dear. We're just torturing each other. Don't ring again, Paul. Please don't ring. Listen, Christine, I've done everything I can. I, I've given it a fair trial. It, it just won't work. I can't stay with her. You've asked her again? For a divorce? Yes, only this morning. What did she say? She'll see me in hell before she'll give me my freedom. There's nothing more we can do. When am I going to see you? I don't think we'd better meet again. Honestly, I don't. Now, wait a minute. Listen to me, Paul, for your own sake. Father likes you. He has every sympathy. But he did make us both promise when you joined the company that we wouldn't lay ourselves open to any more gossip. Oh, for heaven's sake. All I'm suggesting is dinner, lunch even, just to see you. Paul, I'm going away. Huh? Where to? South Africa. What? To my uncle and aunt. For how long? Indefinitely. Was certainly long enough to give us both a chance to get over this. Give all three of us a chance. Because I still think that you and Krilla could make a go of it if I went on the scene. <laughs> you must be joking. All right, so you're going away. But you really don't think that's going to solve anything, do you? That it'll make me stop loving you, or, or you loving me? Oh, my dear, we've been over it so often. What's the good of tearing each other to pieces like this? When am I going to see you? Oh, Paul, here's Mother. I'll ring you at the office tomorrow. Good night, my dear. Christine. Christine. Oh, damn. Is that you, Paul? 
Unless somebody else has a key to this damn flat. You're late. Why not come straight out with it and ask me where I've been? But you told me this morning you were going to play bridge with Sir George. And I bet you checked. No, I didn't, actually. And I certainly don't intend quarrelling with you again. Listen, I've had a letter from Mother. <sighs> that makes my day. How is she enjoying the Bahamas? Or should I ask how the Bahamas are enjoying no, her? No, something wonderful's happened. The solicitors have just found another life insurance policy that Father took out years ago in America. $20,000. Really? Well, that's nearly 7,000 pounds. It'll make all the difference to Mother. Anything that'll make a difference to your mother would make me a very, very happy man. That's not very funny. I don't feel funny, my dear Crilla. I just feel very, very tired. Good night. Oh, but, but Paul, look, she's offering us a holiday out there. All expenses, airfares, everything. Splendid. You go on your own. That'll be a holiday for us both. Yes. You'd like that, wouldn't you? It would clear the field for you and that woman. If by that woman you mean Christine, you didn't let it worry you. She's going to South Africa. So you have been seeing her? Well, actually, I haven't. Even if I had, I can't quite see what concern it would be of yours. Because I happen to know the conditions Sir George laid down when you joined the company. Oh, shut up, woman. You weary me. <laughs> Sir George Hartnell, Sons and Partners Limited. Good morning. Mr. Struthers? Yes, I'll put you through. Morning, Dorothy. Mr. Fenton in yet? Just gone into his office, Mr. Brown. Thanks. Come in. Mr. Fenton, Mr. Capey of the Ministry of Works to see you, sir. Oh, come in. Do sit down. Oh, thanks. All right, thank you, Brown. How oh, good of you to come so promptly, Mr. Capey. <laughs> Explosives usually get a prompt reaction, Mr. Fenton, even from civil servants. <laughs> Uh, what can I do for you exactly? Uh, it's a new and very powerful explosive we want to test. Uh, how powerful? Well, the lab people say about a thousand up on dynamite. Oh, really? Well, I doubt that myself, but still, uh, pretty potent stuff. It's an improvement on the French explosive plastique. Uh, how much would you want to test? Mm, quite a lot, about a um, hundred weight. Hmm. That'd be too much for the gunnery range at Chubiness, even if the war office agreed. More like sundering sands, I should say. That would suit us fine, if it's all right by you. You'd have pretty rough roads down there and several villages to go through. What's it travel like? No problem at all. It's about the most stable of all explosives in the absence of an initiator. Just like putty. You can drop it, hammer it, burn it if you like. Not a squeak out of it. It must have a critical electric detonator. Hmm. What's the object of the test? Blasting and demolition work. Oh. Well, damn it, just think. A block the size of a quarter of a pound of butter would blow a fair-sized suburban house sky high. All right, then. Let's have your dates and I'll get everything laid on. Permit, warning to surrounding villages and all that. Thank you very much indeed. I should say we'd be ready in about oh, ten days' time. Like to come down for a look-see? I'd love to. But uh, big bangs give me a headache. <laughs> Darling mummy. I can't tell you how delighted I was to get both the news and your wonderful invitation. I spoke to Paul the same night and got the reaction I would have expected. Much too proud to accept, of course. And he suggested that I come alone. But I'm not going to. I think to leave him on his own now would be tantamount to giving in. Although I believe you know who is about to leave for South Africa. Actually, I think Master Paul's been giving it some thought since. He's been quite civil. And quite by accident, of course, happened to leave his passport lying around. Of course, he'll want me to make the bookings without his knowledge. Then he'll protest. But he'll come. You take my word for it. I can't tell you how I'm looking forward to it. All my love, Krilla. All right, Brown. You've been admiring Sundring Sands long enough. Go down and collect the detonators. I'm just counting the cakes, then, sir. I'll finish that. How many have you got to? We brought 400 quarter-pound blocks with us, sir. I've packed 322 in already. Oh, good. That leaves um, 78 for me to stow. Where you go. Very good, sir. 
78 for me to stow. One, two, three, four. 74, 75, 76, 77. And I think nobody's going to try and count them after the Big Bang. <laughs> oh, you detonator, sir. Oh, right. Uh, down here. Uh, easy. Easy, does it? Got them all packed in, sir? Uh, oh, yes. Well, all that you left with, that is. I, uh, I put in 78. That's all right, sir. I'd packed 322. Uh, right, now, uh, pass me the wires. Yeah. Crimper and two debts. Here we are. Good. Adhesive? Yeah. Good. All right, now, string the wire out behind you, back to the Land Rover. Okay. Now, we've got three miles of wire aboard, enough to reach from here to the firing point easily. Right, give me the battery. Yeah. Not very big, is it? No, sir. Just think of the blow box we need for the equivalent amount of dynamite. Yeah. Ready? Ready, sir. Okay. Eyes down. Contact. Nothing wrong with that lot. Blimey, half the flaming hill's gone. With less than a hundred weight, four hundred quarter pounders. As you remark, Brown, four hundred quarter pounders. Quite a lift, wasn't it? I wouldn't have thought it possible. Not with anything short of a nuclear. When you realize that one of those blocks would blow a fair-sized house to kingdom come. Yes. Just one. Good morning, sir. Can I show you anything? Yes, I, um, I want a clock, as a matter of fact. Uh, what sort of clock? Sir? A rather a special sort, a high-precision traveling clock. A quite small and absolutely silent. No, then it would have to be an electric one. Um, we have a very nice little thing. <clears throat> Just a moment. Uh, yes, here we are. You see? Mm. A tiny pencil torch battery in the back of the case. Neat, don't you think? Very. But um, how reliable are they? Free replacement without question if they stop or vary more than three minutes a month. Mm. Yes. Um, we've sold over 50 in the six months we've been carrying the line without a single claim. All right, well, I'll take your word for it. Um, oh, how much? Um, eight pounds exactly, sir. And don't hesitate to bring it back if there's any cause for complaint. Oh, thank you. I can uh, safely assure you there won't be. Dead accurate and dead silent. <laughs> now, that ought to meet the lady's requirements. Oh, I'm so glad you're early. I've been shopping. On Mars Bounty? You bet. There. What do you think of these beach slacks and shirts? They look a bit big for you. Well, they're not for me, you idiot. They're yours. You're assuming too much, Quilla. I can't go. I've got too much on at the office. All right, you can't go. I'm not going to fight you over it. These clothes will do for Italy or somewhere when we can go. And I can get a refund on our air ticket. There's no reason at all why you shouldn't go. I'm not going without you. Quillo, let's sit down and talk it over. Just once again, without flying at each other's throats. Right. Now, listen, my dear. Forget my sore-headedness. I know I've been difficult. And I, I'm sorry, but... Well, put it down to work, if you like. Actually, I couldn't be spared. Not really. And, well, you know what I'm aiming for, don't you? A partnership. Yes, but George thinks the world of me at the moment, and... Well, I want to keep it that way. I see. All right. Well, just let it go for the present. Wouldn't that seem a bit like casting it back in your mother's face? Oh, she'll understand. You won't go on your own? No. Can't you believe that I really would enjoy the holiday more if you were there with me? And that if you can't be there, I'd rather be here with you. Is that such a strange thing? Yes. It is strange, considering what a louse I've been for the last few months. Oh, no, you... you You're a very obstinate young woman, my Crillo, and I love you for it. All right, Bahamas, here we come. You mean... Oh, Paul. Oh. What? 
What the hell are you crying for? Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, Paul, it'll be a lovely holiday. And a second honeymoon. All right, all right. Now, come on, break it up. Now, listen. Don't expect them to be sociable for the next few nights. I'll have a hell of a lot of homework to do before I can leave things with a clear conscience. All right. Once I get into that workroom of mine, I'll have to be left alone. Anything you say, Paul. Anything at all. Hello? Oh, it's me. Paul. Christine, I, I think... I think it's going to be all right. You mean she's agreed to... to give you your freedom? Practically. I, I can't tell you over the telephone. I'll meet you tomorrow at lunch at the Westgate. But, darling, I'm sailing tomorrow. Oh, don't, Christine. Don't. I tell you, it, it's going to be all right. She's going off on Wednesday to the Bahamas. She's practically agreed to a divorce. Oh, her mother's coming to a lot of money, and that's made all the difference. But, Christine, you you mustn't, mustn't leave me now. I, I need you, my darling. Paul, I don't want to go. Not if there's a ray of hope. There is, there is, I tell you. Just have faith. Don't go tomorrow. Wait until Wednesday, at least. But what on earth can I say to my parents? Oh, say you're not well. You, you don't feel up to it. I can hardly say that, then come up and lunch with you. Well, never mind about the lunch. Just put off your sailing and believe in me. Oh, well, all right. But listen, Paul, if you're just trying to borrow time without any justification... I'm not. I, I promise you I'm not. It'll be all right, darling. It will be. I must go now. I've got a lot to do. Good night, my darling. Good night. Good night, dear. <sighs> now to check everything... Detonate a crimped into the center of the block. Negative onto the metalwork of the clock case. Positive onto our hand. Stab on the numero to stop the hour hand. Removed minute hand. Right. Now, connect up with battery. Oh, disconnect detonator first, though. Now, try the current. Lovely. Good fat spark there. Step it up with two more batteries on the day. Ah, what do we pack it in? Mm -hmm. Suitcase? No, no good. She might take a last minute look inside for something. Ah, jewel case. Hmm. Hasn't got much in the way of jewels to put in it, poor dear. But she always casts the thing around with her. Yes, jewel case. Then, if I can slip it into the suitcase at the last minute... So it's all right, Mummy, darling. Just as I said, he hummed and hawed over it at first. Too busy, wouldn't accept charity, etc., etc. Then finally, I took the bull by the horns and went out and booked our air passages for next Wednesday and just presented it to him as a fait accompli. We'll be there on Thursday morning, almost as soon as you get this. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for making all this possible. All my love. Krilla. Take off 11 a.m. Two hours out over the Atlantic. One o'clock. Oh, God. All those other people. Oh, to hell with them. These things happen, don't they? They won't know anything about it. Nobody will know. Just a big bang and then nothing. It's not a bad way to go out, really. Okay. Detonator crimped in. Negative and positives connected. Check. Correct. The time? Dead ten o'clock now. Uh, set it at that. One hour to the airport. Two hours after that. One o'clock. One o'clock. Paul, where's your suitcase? I put it in the boot of the car. Come on, for the Lord's sake, we're going to be late. Are we using our own car? Well, of course. But you can't leave it at the airport for a whole month. Now, Brown's picking it up and driving it back here. Now, come on. I'm coming. I'm just checking the bathroom taps are turned off. Now, oh, where's my jewel case? Oh, blast your jewel case. It's empty anyhow. I know it's empty, but I love it dearly. It was the very first present you ever gave me. Get a move on. Not without my jewel case. All right, then, if you must know, I shoved it inside your suitcase. Oh, whatever for? I always 
don't carry it. It impresses air hostesses. For the simple reason you're always leaving the damn thing behind you in airports, that's why. Oh, well, once that time in Milan. Oh, plus a few others when I've rescued it. Anyhow, that's where it is, and that's where it stays. Now, are you coming? Yes, I'm coming. Now, well, where on earth is the front door key? Oh, damn the front door key. You're going to miss that plane. It a bit fine. We? What the devil have I been doing all the morning? We're trying to shift you. Oh, poor Paul. I'm a trial, aren't I? Never mind. Think of all that lovely sun ahead of us. Long, lazy days on the beach. Uh, look, I've left it as long as I could. I've got to tell you now. What? Something happened last night in the office. We've been invited to tender for a dam in Brazil. You mean... I mean, I'm not coming. I can't. Oh, well. Krilla, try and understand. This is my job. I couldn't let Sir George down. An $11 million contract. But we've got to get the figures out within a week. We can do it if everybody piles in, working night and day. But I'll come out then, I, I promise you. You never really meant to come, did you? No, that's not fair. Of course I meant to come. And I will come, but... I'm not chucking away a chance like this. Damn it all, it's your future as well as my own I'm thinking of. Turn back. I'm not going. Listen, I've told you I'll come out and join you in a week. If you fly out today. <sighs> Damn it all, old girl. J j just think of it. If you called off now, you know what to think in the office. But you couldn't trust me. Make me look right, old Charlie, as Mrs. Warburg would say. <sighs> That's my girl. I knew you'd see it in its proper light. It's a disappointment to me too, you know. Here we are. Main entrance. Ten minutes to flight time. Porter. Porter. Flight 309 Bahamas. One suitcase in the boot. Get it, will you? Uh, stay with him, Krilla, uh, while I check the ticket. And then screw up the passports. Now, uh, quick. I'll join you there. Oceanic announced the departure of Jet Flight 309 for Bahamas and Jamaica. Will passengers... Don't let her miss it. She's got to get it. Got to. Where is she now? The fool's going to miss it. Oh, Krilla. Krilla, where the devil have you been? Look, here's your ticket. They'll transfer mine to another flight about next Monday, with luck. Oh, your suitcase has gone out. Here's the baggage shit to claim at the other end. Laughed your mother. Oh, go on, go on. They've all gone through now. Hmm? What's this? A note. When the hell did you write it? So that's why I couldn't find you. All right, bus off. Have a good flight. Be seeing you. <sighs> uh, I feel sick. <sighs> Need a whiskey. Two whiskeys. Big ones. Eleven o'clock. Dead on time. Dead on time. Sir George Hartnell's residence. Oh, Miss Christine Hartnell, please. Uh, Mr. Paul speaking. Christine, can I... can I see you? Where are you? At the airport. Yes, she's just gone off. She's quitting me. It's better that way. Christine, I, I did try. I don't think she ever really cared. It was only her jealousy of you kept her hanging on so long. You sound distressed, my dear. Do I? Well, I suppose it's natural in a way. So that'll pass as soon as I see you. Look, suppose I drive down. I can make it in a little over two hours. I'll be waiting. My darling, darling girl. Drive carefully, Paul. I know what you like when you're upset. Now, don't you worry. About half past one, then. Bye, my sweet.
five to one. Five minutes to go. A thousand miles out of the Atlantic. What if they ever recover enough of the hull to... for the experts to analyze? Motive and opportunity they look for. <laughs> Me with my access to explosives. Buying that clock. Oh, what the hell am I talking about? There won't be anything to recover. She'll be blown into a thousand pieces. Drop 35, 40,000 feet into the ocean. She'll just disappear. Better be getting on. No. no wait a minute. Hands shaking too much. Oh, God. I wish I had a drink. Cigarette. Yes. Cigarette. Oh, that's better. What's this? Oh, Lord. A note. I'd forgotten. Oh, to hell with it. Burn before reading. No. Let's have a look, then. Paul, I've tried. You know, I've tried right up to this minute. But this is the end. I'm leaving you. I'm not coming back. <laughs> You can say that again, my love. I know that you never intended coming with me. When the time comes, you can divorce me for desertion. I won't defend the suit. And I wish Christine the joy of her bargain. Thriller. P.S. I'm taking nothing of yours with me. You'll find the jewel case in the boot of the car. <laughs> so that's that. Boot of the car! Oh my god! No! In Returned Without Thanks by Barclay Mather, Paul Fenton was played by Hector Ross and Quilla Fenton by Hilda Schroeder. Other parts were played by Walter Fitzgerald, Patricia Gallimore, Michael McLean, Lewis Stringer, Wilfred Babbage and Arthur Lawrence. We also heard Geoffrey Matthews, Nigel Graham and Ursula Hurst. <laughs>